So when I first open up my scene that I've exported from Storyboard Pro, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my cat layer cat SB, which stands for Storyboard. And then because I like to work non-destructively as possible, I'm going to duplicate that layer by going to Edit, Duplicate, or Control shift d is the hotkey I'll also use. And I'm going to move that duplicated layer to the top, and I'm going to rename it as cat rough for rough animation. Another tool that I'll use is the lightbox tool, which is this little light bulb right here underneath your drawing view. And what that does is it makes all the other drawings semi-transparent. So this is useful when I'm working on my topmost layer, my cat rough, but I still want to reference the background and all the drawings below it while I'm working. It's just a good way to kind of isolate the frame that you're working on. So that's a tool I like to keep on while I'm doing these steps. So here I'm going through my duplicated layer and I'm indicating which ones I want to be keys using this smart key drawing tool up here. And if you don't see that, it's under Windows, Toolbars, Mark Drawing. So the way it works is the red is a key or your extreme poses. And a breakdown is sort of like an in-between, but it's more just a transition from one key to the other. So you can think of a key as an extreme drawing and a breakdown as an in-between the extreme drawings. And if you use the green eye button, that's for in-between. That'll erase any of your markings and just mark it as a regular old in-between drawing. So I'll go through and pretty much all of my storyboard poses are going to be keys because they're the extreme storytelling positions. Some might be breakdowns depending on the context. And then over here on my X sheet, you can see how that looks. You can also use the X sheet to navigate if you're more used to traditional animation. And that's under Windows X sheet. So after I've marked all of my storyboard poses with either a key or a breakdown, then I'll go through and add more drawings because we're still in the thumbnail stage and we need to add more information so we can see how the animation is supposed to be. So I do that by going up to this button and clicking blank drawing every time I want to add a breakdown in between two keys. So here I'm working on an anticipation. So I'm having his head reel back and I'm going to change his expression and we'll have a new breakdown pose. So I'll go through the whole animation in this process and just add all the drawings that I think I'll need in order to be able to in between the whole thing later. And I'll keep these drawings really loose because after the rough animation stage is what's called the tie down where we'll actually put it back on model. So here I'm focused more on what I want the movement to look like. So the less time I spend kind of babying the drawing and making it look nice, the more I can focus on just getting to the next drawing. And if I need to start over, it's no big deal. So I'll try to be pretty quick and rough in this stage just because I want to focus more on the energy behind it. So here you'll also see me putting in what's called timing charts. So let's explain timing charts just really quickly. Let's say I have pose A and pose B in the frames where I want them to be. And I want to create a timing chart so I know how to do my in-betweens between these two poses. So here's what a timing chart looks like. We have our frame number up here. And this pose is circled because it's a key. And we want to go to pose B. Now these wouldn't be letters in your animation. They would actually be the frame numbers that the drawings are on. But for this example, we'll use letters. So the way a timing chart works is it tells me how many drawings are in between and also how closely to favor pose A or pose B. If I were to do a drawing right here and we'll call this A1 and this may even be a breakdown. So a breakdown is underlined and you can do a lot of interesting things with breakdowns. It's sort of a transitional drawing. So if a character is turning their head, they can say move their head down when they're turning their head or move it up or blink. So a breakdown is sort of how you transition. So let's create that drawing A1. I'm going to drag my pose B over here. I'm going to go in the middle and press blank frame. So now we have a blank frame to draw on. I'll turn on my onion skin so I can see pose A and pose B. And since A1 is right in the middle, that means this drawing is going to be right in the middle. And we'll mark that it's A1 and a breakdown. So it's perfectly in half drawing A1. So a way to indicate that this is halfway in between is to do an arch. So I can see from looking at this that A1 is meant to be halfway exactly between pose A and pose B. Now if we do a drawing here and change this to A2 and make this A1, so we'll change our breakdown to A2, 
So let's do the same thing. Let's do drawing A1. Well, this is exactly going to be halfway between drawing A2 and A. So in order to draw this drawing A1, I have to have my halfway drawing already because it's halfway between A and A2. So let's do drawing A1. So I'll add a frame right before A2, click my blank frame button, turn on my onion skin, and I can see my drawing A2 right here. So A1 is going to be halfway from that. So now we have animation that's favoring up here. So there's a lot of hang time up here, and then it quickly goes down to frame B. Well, let's say we wanted the opposite of that. We'll delete our drawing A1, rename this back to A1, remove that tick. So if we want to favor drawing B, then we would just do the same thing. We would add A2 here, and if it gets too crowded, you can also draw over here and just kind of stagger them like this. So drawing A2 is now halfway between A1 and B. So if I were to do drawing A2, it would look like this. I would add a drawing after A1, click here, and then add my blank frame, turn on my onion skin, and indicate this is A2, which is halfway between A1 and B. So we'll just add that in like this. So now we have animation that slows out. It slows out into pose B. But let's say we wanted to slow it out even more. So let's add A3 right here. And I'll indicate another arch showing that it's halfway between A2 and B. So I'll add another drawing after A2. So now we have animation that's very slowly going into pose B. So this is good for, say, an anticipation, but for the sake of this bouncing ball, it doesn't really make sense. For a bouncing ball, you'd want to favor more hang time up here and then quickly get to pose B. So this is just for an example. If you want a supernatural kind of movement, you could do a slow in and slow out. So we can add even more drawings to this to really give it a nice smooth motion. So this will be A1, A2, A3. So the more drawings you add, the slower your animation's gonna be and the smoother it's gonna be. So now we wanna add our arches. So we indicate that A2 is halfway between A3 and A, and then A1 is halfway between that. So now if we do this, let's rename our drawings appropriately that we have so far. So you will have to redraw these numbers a lot. That's why it's important to get your timing right before adding timing charts. But it's super easy. Just change the numbers. It's no big deal. So now let's do drawings A1 and A2. So question, can I do drawing A1 right now? Well, not really, because I don't have drawing A2. I'm missing A2, which I need to reference to do drawing A1. So let's do drawing A2 first. And now that we have drawing A2, we can now use it to reference to do drawing A1. So now we have a natural motion from A to B with a slow in and slow out. So whether you do a slow in, a slow out, or a slow in combined with slow out, it all depends on the context of the motion you're trying to capture, and this all comes with experience. You'll be redoing this a lot and kind of figuring it out as you go. I know I certainly have, and animation's a lifelong learning process, and that's okay. So just as a final note on timing charts, there's four different kind of timing charts you can do. There's linear ease in, ease out, ease in and out. And sometimes, depending on who you're talking to, these terms can be swapped depending on which program you're using and also who you're talking to. But I like to refer to ease in as something like this. It favors the first drawing a lot and then quickly gets to the last drawing. So ease out is just the opposite. It favors this pose a lot more and quickly comes out from the first pose. So ease in and ease out looks something like this. So you have easing on both sides of the pose, really natural kind of motion. And then linear is just what it sounds like. There is no easing. They're just evenly spaced drawings, kind of neutral, sort of mundane, but it can work for certain situations depending on what you're doing. And that's timing charts. So I'll go through my animation and I'll add timing charts to almost all of my keys. So that way, when I'm doing in-betweens, I can just go through, read my timing charts, and do my in-betweens in a very meticulous and factory output kind of style. I just read the charts, and I know what drawing to do next automatically. So once my timing charts are all finished and my animation is completely timed out with the keys and the breakdowns, it looks something like this. So next, we're going to move on to doing the in-betweens.